Well, yesterday, the state of Florida executed Michael Dwayne Zach. And Zach received the death penalty after his conviction for the rape and murder of a Pensacola woman. He died by lethal injection at the Florida State Penitentiary in Stark. He was the sixth inmate put to death in Florida this year. He was the 105th person executed in the state since capital punishment was resumed in the United States in 1976. Now, with each execution comes protests. That was no different last night. WEAR's Tanner Stewart was one of the media witnesses to that execution. And tonight, he reports that the death penalty opponents argue Zach was a changed man whose life should have been spared. At 6 p.m. today, per Florida law, the department will carry out the sentence of the court in the state of Florida versus Michael Dwayne Zach III. My daughter will not come back. In June 1996, Judge Tarva ruled in a way that this person will never be free again. Michael Zach's nine-day crime spree spanned from Tallahassee to Pensacola. Lori Rosillo was the first victim, killed on an Okaloosa County beach after befriending Zach at a nearby bar. It was the sexual assault and murder of Ravon Kennedy Smith the next day in Escambia County that would ultimately lead him to death row in 1997. Appeal after appeal through the years offered insight to Zach's mental state. His attorneys most recently argued he suffered from fetal alcohol syndrome, though the sentence would never be reversed. The sentence of the state of Florida versus Michael Dwayne Zach, the third was carried out at 6.14 p.m. The witness room was still. Not a word was spoken among the 20 witnesses for more than 30 minutes. When the curtain covering the window to the execution room was dropped, Zach looked to the crowd before a prison official called the governor to confirm the death warrant. One minute later, we heard his last words, I love you all. Just outside the prison, about 50 people protested across the street. Protesters like Clemente Aguirre, who knew Zach personally. Aguirre spent more than a decade on death row with Zach before his own death sentence for double murder was thrown out for wrongful conviction. He spoke of Zach as a close friend inside the prison. With all my love and all my heart, I'm telling you, that place changed you forever. So no matter who you were, it's who you become. In my experience with this man in there, he was no violence. He was no cursing. Everything was love and forgiveness. Though his final words in the execution table were brief, Michael Zack left behind more for others to read in a letter he released in his last day. I did things that have hurt a lot of people, not only the victims and their families and friends, but my own family and friends as well. I make no excuses. I lay no blame. But how I wish that I could have a second chance to live out my days in prison and continue to do all I can to make a difference in this world. And one final message for the governor. To Governor DeSantis and the Clemency Board, I love you, I forgive you, I pray for you. Michael Zach. There are currently 291 inmates on Florida's death row. According to the Death Penalty Information Center, there are no executions scheduled in Florida through 2025. In Stark, Florida, I'm Tanner Stewart. According to the Department of Corrections in Florida, the average time an inmate spends on death row before being executed is 23 years. Zach spent 27 years on death row. To read his entire final statement, we have it posted on our website, weartv.com.